Hello there, it's your bud. Today I'll be discussing Sword Art Online, also known as SAO, an anime that I'm sure many of us have seen. I'll leave out many scenes that I feel you should get to watch for yourself, and I'll only be covering a handful of moments from the first season as spoiler-free as I can make it. So I will be using a lot of the Christmas episode of SAO, hence the title Kirito Saves Christmas, and I will be adding a handful of moments that will give anyone new to this a good understanding of the world. Our characters get trapped in a virtual world called Einkrad, where death in this game means death in real life, like when the safety is turned off in the holodeck in Star Trek. In this world, Nerve Gear is a brand of VR that has been hacked by the creator of SAO to fatally harm the wearer if their character's health drops to zero in the game. It is said that in the first two months that thousands died. When we finally get to see the first fight, it has all the signs of a great boss battle. The teamwork the lack of teamwork, and that desperate struggle. Now with the added fear of death being permanent, what would possibly drive them to take on these challenges? It's the fact that the sadistic game designer made only one way to end this horrible situation, beat all the bosses on every floor, all 100 floors. I'm sure that many of us have dreamed about being trapped in a video game. It's a common enough idea now. However, before SAO, there were only a handful of anime or shows to use the subject directly. The only major stuck in a video game anime that I was aware aware of before SAO was Dot Hack, an extremely boring show in my opinion that wasted everything that it had going for its advantage. If there was ever excitement in Dot Hack, I never saw it. Then as a teen, I saw SAO and it was instantly the coolest thing ever. I could care less about how much of a power fantasy it was or whatever actually legitimate criticism there was against it. I didn't care. It was everything that I wanted. And I said I'd only mention season one, however, as a disabled person who has spent many nights in hospitals, where I relate very closely to a girl named Yuki from season 2, who is bedridden in reality, but is anything she wants to be in VR. If you're interested in hearing more, just let me know in the comments. Anyways, back to SAO. So, there are a number of personalities on display throughout this show, and how they deal with this experience is neat to watch. Some solo players that roam outside the city, some working in trades or services running pubs or blacksmiths. There are people with familiars, an extremely wide range of ages because it's either an E-rated game or there are lots of parents that really don't follow the rules. So there are many different approaches to this world. One of our main characters, Kirito, was a beta tester and because of it, he has felt comfortable soloing until he meets our other main character, Asuna. I might pronounce her name Asuna or Asuna, so forgive me for that. And then together, they help each other to survive the game. This show has a number of sequels, all with similar stories. If you thought Disney Star Wars was the most copy-paste it could get, then you haven't seen in all the SAO spin-offs. There is entertainment to be found in all the SAO shows, but how much depends highly upon how jaded you are to anime or how pumped you are to watch more SAO. I have to mention the other show, Aliceization, which from what I've seen has some really great animation and more mystery and interest in things other than the general stuck in a game situation. SAO is not a failure, it just doesn't embrace all that it can be. That would be Log Horizon, but we'll talk about that show at another time. If you've ever played, and yes I'm going to say it, Dark Souls, then you know how punishing it can be, but also how rewarding it is to win a fight. Whether it's against a boss with friends by your side, or whether it's invading people to wreck their day and make them uninstall the game, there's nothing like that victory against a strong opponent, or the exact opposite. There's also the community that tells everyone their tips, tricks, and traps, and how the game grows as more people learn about and explore the world. In SAO, there are sword skills, which some can only be rewarded to players who have achieved certain goals goals or abilities. Think of them as leaderboard perks for having the highest stats in some certain aspect. Now there are learnable sword skills that you get by choosing your class in this world, and then there are also sword skills rewarded very much like a leaderboard perk. Our main character has one of these sword skills. Now some people choose a different path in SAO. PKers, people who attack others for experience and gear to whatever end they feel like at that particular moment. This makes an atmosphere where being a sword solo player can be a dangerous aspect. When sword skills, gear, and the disconnect of being in a virtual world combined, it brings out all sorts of trouble and all sorts of people. So people band together in guilds, or armies, or whatever else they feel is appropriate to title themselves as. It is unclear if all monsters except bosses respawn, or if cleared floors no longer have monsters after having their floor boss defeated. There are a few floors entirely devoid of monsters just meant for the players to enjoy, and even if the monsters continue to respawn, 
the XP would be useless to those at higher levels. The nerve gear in SAO is shown in other shows as well. In one show called Excel World, there is an upgraded version of nerve gear that doesn't require a helmet. I'll probably talk more about Excel World in the future, but for now, just know that the VR in the show is very well done. The details they use to describe this style of VR, I think is one of the things that makes it so good. SAO gives us a look at our characters outside the VR world before getting pulled in, and I really appreciate getting that background, and then a sense of being lost in a scary world that you might never return from once the characters enter the game. Even now, I can watch SAO with my brain turned off and I still like it, but I can also watch all the joke videos and hate and see why people might think those things. But to me, SAO is still one of the best for what it is. Simple boss battles, adventure, and Hunger Games style survival entertainment that we probably all wonder how we would react to. Isekai anime, or stuck in another world anime, really wasn't as popular before SAO. Then when everyone saw how interesting it was to put characters into any setting that you choose, and how much money you could make off it, there began to be a variety of copycats, and a few other good ideas. Most of them were riding off the success of SAO and the insatiable appetite that we all had for more versions of this story. There were of course many other influences on this genre, however, SAO was so easy for corporations to understand. Get a badass guy and girl, put them in a dangerous world, and use the trapped in a video game thing as an excuse for power levels, character design, art styles, and story arcs. The typical video game MMO quest and the typical adventure anime arc share many similarities, and many of us watch these things for the journey as much as for the destination. The victory over a boss wouldn't be nearly as sweet if we didn't struggle with our characters every step of the way. An SAO can still throw surprises at you, like new characters, crazy boss designs, or mechanics. I think it does a very good job of making a lived-in world with tons going on in the background that make you wonder about the countless adventures that must be going on at all times, or the terrible loss that some must be going through, and the need to push forward and live instead of waiting for the end. Our characters in SAO end up spending years in the game and go through some incredible changes because of it. All the growth and challenges they've gone through helps shape them for the rest of their life, and some of the quirks or habits that they pick up in VR are pointed out with a fair bit of comedy, or sometimes in a way that shows just how much the game ends up affecting our main characters. The bond between Asuna and Kirito is really great to watch, and I think that although it can be extremely cheesy, it was still done very well, and I never felt like the characters were being forced to develop a relationship that didn't suit them. All their actions seem fairly in line with their personalities, and yes, while very, very cheesy, it's still nice to see. Plus, watching them fight side by side is always a real treat. They always go all out with the animation, and it makes every moment so incredible to watch. The fights make this show shine. The sword skills are also great to watch, and I really like the fights in Season 2 as well. But there's something special about Season 1. They don't over-explain anything, they just put badass characters in badass situations. And though Kirito comes across as a total edgelord now, he was so cool to a younger version of me. Well, nowadays, I'd like to see him restraining himself and being a little more reserved. Back then, I was like, yeah, go for it. Tell them how cool you are because you're so strong. <laughs> I was so naive, but still, this anime has a place in many of our hearts. Aincrad is a pretty awesome world, too. A giant floating castle in the sky, with each floor a gigantic area of wilderness or danger waiting to be conquered. Visually, I always loved Aincrad, and having so many landscapes and cities and towns organized in this manner makes total sense for a game and for the anime. As the farther up we progress, the stronger and more dangerous the monsters become, and the crazier the landscapes you have to travel through become as well. It's a giant dungeon floating in the sky. There are many more things to talk about with SAO, but I can't say any more without giving away spoilers, and I don't really like to do that in my videos. I hope that this was enjoyable to anyone that has already seen SAO and just wanting to watch some awesome scenes, as well as anyone who still hasn't, which if you haven't, then go watch it right now. I might cover some of the spin-off shows at a later date, however, I will probably cover the other video game anime that I've mentioned in this video first. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to support me, leave a like, subscribe, or leave any questions or or suggestions in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.